Good morning and welcome back to it, the Now Morning Show, your Monday edition, where this morning we are talking work ethic and accountability. Hot topics, regardless of industry. And to give us some more insight, Mr. Richard Solomon, the Managing Director of Development Consulting Centre Limited, joins us on the Now Morning Show. Good morning and welcome. Good morning to you. Good to be here. It's good to have you because discipline, tolerance, and production are our watchwords. Yeah. But we do need to manage that, if you will, with some ethical practices. Sure. And if we were to look into the workplace and work ethic and accountability, how would you define each of these and why are they necessary? For yeah, us well, to I mean, Dr. Function? Eric Williams was onto something, obviously. Mm. Discipline, tolerance, and production. Obviously, giving the those watchwords to the nation suggested that he he saw something, a need maybe to set a North Star, as it were, for Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about work ethic, it's, it's an understanding in the of the general value of work in and of itself. It is its own reward. Yes, we work so that we can get paid, people have bills, etc. But producing a good day's work has its own reward. Intrinsically, I believe that, right? Uh, accountability, this is my responsibility. I am supposed to get this done. And I make very little efforts to sort of pass off that to someone else. It's something that I am supposed to do. And therefore, if I'm questioned, I must be able to answer. Mm -hmm. I really want you to scream that into the <laughs> ends of the earth. Because what we will see is a lot of the time when we talk about work ethic and accountability, mm -hmm. particularly, that's exactly what happens. Right. A lot of fingers are pointed. Yeah. And I imagine that it, with your background, your level of education and experience, you can apply this to multiple industries. Sure. So before we go into the topic any further, can you give me a little bit of insight as to what you've seen across the industries, perhaps some of the clients that you've dealt with, yeah. where it's it's necessary to drive home what is accountability and, of course, the ethics of the week. Please. So as an organization development consultant, I work with organizations. Now we've worked with companies now in 45 countries. Um, a lot of our, com our, our clients are right here in the Caribbean, of course, because there are lots of countries in the Caribbean. Um, but if we focus in on Trinidad and Tobago, the, the, the thing here is, for example, if an, a manager seeks to have a discussion with an employee about performance, Often, I've heard employees say things like, well, why are they picking on me? What do you mean? You are meant to do 100 widgets for the day. Let's mm -hmm. use that. You did 60. Shouldn't there be a conversation as to why? Mm -hmm. Forget about emotions. Just shouldn't we talk about right. where are we now and why are we there and how can we help to make this gap smaller? You know, that, that, that should happen, but often you get a pushback as if this is something bad and this is something wrong. So then maybe we need to talk about approaches or actual uh, perspectives. Simply because when we talk about the workplace ethic versus personal ethics, mm -hmm. that might come into play. We have to consider, for example, that people have biases. People mm -hmm. have perspectives that are mm -hmm. innate to them. And when we talk about our personal ethics, the, the integrity that we hold ourselves to, could there be conflict and how do we na manage that? Well, if you think about um, our top three problems for doing business in Trinidad, so let me pull those together. They are our bureaucracy, mm -hmm. corruption, and poor work ethic in the labor force of Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. Those are the top three problems for doing business in Trinidad. And the reason I, I reference that is because if you say um, corruption is a real, a major problem, right, then how do we now juxtapose the issue of personal ethic? Because it doesn't happen on its own. Okay. It happens at all levels. And people don't like to talk about it, but it's, it's every, obviously there. If work ethic is such a large problem, then we're seeing a similarity of behavior. Somehow people want to circumvent the processes. We want to be rewarded, but we don't necessarily want to do what it takes to be rewarded. And I'm speaking generally, of course, because this is not everyone in every organization, but it's a real challenge in that way. So I don't know that there is a real difference in mm. terms of those two. I appreciate the, the <laughs> but I wouldn't say distinction, but the confirmation yeah, of suspicion, yeah, if yeah, you will. Yeah. And in that case, what does the conversation look like? From the perspective of a consultant, mm -hmm. you would essentially speak to management all team? What um, is the actual it depends thing? on what we're doing, but about 60% of our work is with leaders and managers, um, helping them to develop the skill and the attitude, um, and the attitude is important, around doing their jobs. 
So, so management is a, is a scientific art of getting work done through people. So people are your stock in trade. This is what you work with. Mm -hmm. Similar to an artist that works on the easel with the paint and the brush, that's their stock in trade. But people are a manager's stock in trade. And so their work is to get work done. And so holding others accountable, if you're a supervisor, manager, leader, whatever you're called, that's kind of part of what you're supposed to do. And I'll go one step further. If you're not doing that, you're really not doing your job. And so that raises an issue. And there goes the interview, guys. <laughs> That's all we needed you to say. I know that somebody at home, somebody in the office is looking on saying, Lauren, for the people in the back. <laughs> and in that case, that's where you come in. That's it. That's it. And strategically navigate those sorts of pitfalls that yeah. we can all identify across industry. And, you know, it's, it's not just industry. It's not just managers. But I think it's a national thing for us as a people. There are lots of things we don't like talking about. We sweep things under the carpet. Um, but they are forever before us, the mm -hmm. so-called elephant in the room. You walk into you know, a particular organization, maybe it's a, a public service organization, and you speak to person one, and they tell you one, two, three. You speak to person two, and they tell you four, five, six. It's the same thing you're asking about. And then when you get to the fourth person, and you say, well, person one told me this, you say, who you really talk to? Who is that person? As if I am supposed to know that. No, we're supposed to have similarities mm -hmm. or the same information, and people should be held accountable Counting. for that. You know, but often that doesn't happen. And so it takes longer and longer to get things done and costs more to do business as a result. So what you're talking about is ultimately going to save money for companies, Absolutely. get it right the first time. Yes. But let's say in that instance where it isn't right the first time, mm -hmm. we're focusing a little bit more on accountability now. Mm -hmm. That may look like taking ownership mm -hmm. and correcting things. Mm -hmm. Again, there is a need for a team effort. So from leadership, management, however you want to be calling them, how do we create that synergy? How do, what does that conversation or that direction look like? Right. Post, yeah. well, recovery, if mm -hmm. you will, in recovery. Things mode. will go wrong, that's okay. You know, organizations are made up of people and people are imperfect. So things are gonna go wrong, we accept that. It should not be egregious, it shouldn't be well, we just let it fly however it goes. It, it can't be that. So it has to be that, one, we recognize that something is wrong. Two, we confront it in a developmental manner. Very important. What Not is that a developmental manner? So, so we, we're assuming that something has gone wrong for one of the three reasons that people don't perform. They don't know how, something keeping them back, they don't want to. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the only three reasons, right? If they don't know how we can teach and train, if something is keeping them back, we could close that gap in terms of whatever that systemic problem is. If they don't want to, then that is a very difficult conversation around motivation and work ethic. Mm -hmm. Because I can't make you want to Could work. You? No one can in, infuse that in another individual. Sure, I can create the conditions under which you would be more likely to want to work. But the desire, the intrinsic desire is yours and yours alone. Mm -hmm. And so this takes us back to how are we developing people, children, in the school system? How are we socializing young people to come into the world of work? And I think too many times people have this expectation because that's what they've been told, that once you check these boxes, you get a degree or something like that, then the world Did is yours. Yeah, the, actually, that's just the key to getting the door and then now you begin to shine. Mm -hmm. So that developmental conversation is about identifying where the gap is. And then let's talk about how we close that and how do we monitor how you do. Because you can't just say, I'm closing it and I'll leave you to go and do as you please. It doesn't work that way. So when we talk about accountability in terms of the addressing, the development, or the developmental conversation yes. is one thing. But following through with that, Coaching is what I'm hearing mm -hmm. you describing thereafter, so we can move from that point to the, uh, well, positively contributing point yeah. of things, yes? Yes, so it could be coaching. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's one. It, it might be training, which is about skill and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Lots of times organizations are wasting training dollars because they are trying to close a gap that has nothing to do with skill and knowledge. If your systems are bad, if people don't want to work, maybe they're mishired. You know, and they don't seem to have come around to the understanding that even if this is not your perfect job, you still need to do it well while you're here. You don't have to stay forever. You could right. move on, mm -hmm. but, but you still need to do it well. So that may be a coaching conversation as well. Right. Now that raises the question, can most managers coach? Do they know how to do it? And many don't. And I don't blame them, you know. Most managers are accidental managers, hmm. meaning they, they, they did their work well and somebody promoted them but didn't promote them in terms of their ability because they didn't build the ability to get work done through people. What right. they were is good at their work. 
So this is now raises the issue of another set of skills. And again, we spend 60% of our time Skilled trying to help and to close this gap because patient. it's such a big... But then, oof, you've, you've unearthed so many other <laughs> questions and so many other conversations. Yes. What I'm hearing, though, is perhaps culture as well. Mm -hmm. Hear me out. Go ahead. In the sense of many industries across banking, uh, Finance largely is where I came from. Right. I saw it all the time. We got long service awards. Yes. And it was almost like a reward for simply being there. Yes. Yes. And I thought to myself after a while, it would inculcate a sort of, uh, of behavior of, well, let me just do what I need to do and not aspire towards more mm. or not necessarily look at moving. And that in itself sounds like it could contribute to that sense of persons who are, as you described them, accidental <laughs> managers, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe when yeah. we talk about work ethic and accountability, we have to also look at culture. Yes. Yeah. We should. Um, part of our challenge as a nation is that we've had money for a very long time. We are a wealthy nation, third in the Americas. You know, in terms of how far our money goes, our pay goes, mm -hmm. third in the Americas, cars, third in the Americas. We're the third wealthiest nation in the Americas. So that, I think, has made life a little easy for us. No, don't come for me. <laughs> Some people will say, well, what are you talking about? People are suffering, people are catching their, you know what? What suffering looks different in different places. I mean, we live in a nation, and this is a stereo, maybe stereotypical, but we live in a nation where people will say they're struggling, but they have a 14-inch flat screen, screen television on mm -hmm. their walls. Mm -hmm. That is not struggling in the grand scheme of things. We have 99% literacy. You know, over 20% of people have some kind of tertiary level education. Our unemployment rate is around 4%. This is not a struggling nation. It isn't. And let me go one step further. When, you're, I don't know if you remember this, Dr. Rowley some time ago was asked about furthering or continuing the work from home. And he said two things. He said, one, the infrastructure of the nation really is not ready to really keep that up. But he said a second very important thing. He said some people don't even work from the office. And they came for him. And I was like, but he's right. Hmm. What do you mean? There are hmm. lots of people who go to work and in an eight hour day, they're giving you two hours, three hours. I mean, hmm. they're there, but has more appearance mm. as opposed to performance. Correct, correct. You know? So, so we definitely have thing. to look at yeah, culture yeah, 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 and we definitely have to have you back on set because this <laughs> conversation is long far reaching and very much striking chords across the board, mm -hmm. across the set here as well. <laughs> uh, but certainly something that we can explore in a sure. greater capacity. Sure. However, for those who are willing to continue the conversation, perhaps on a personal or individual level, how do we connect with you, Mr. I'm on, Solomon? I'm on the social media, uh, all the social medias. You can catch me on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Richard Solomon, um, a simple Google search will usually turn, turn up. Um, <laughs> usually, <laughs> turn me says. up, I'm there. <laughs> so then to close, I want to yeah. ask, in terms of the possibility or the impact of work ethic developmental conversations and that level of accountability that we need, mm -hmm. we have hope. Yeah. We have possibilities. Right. How do we tap into that? <sighs> will. We need people with the right will. 26% of our labor force works for the government. That's a big number. And while we don't have, we don't have cogent studies about the levels of work ethic in the public versus the private sector, um, I'm working on that right now. But I think our experience tells us that mm, the public sector wanes a little bit. Uh, I'm being kind, right? And so it, it requires the will. Now, I can't not mention that in this nation, we've got the worst relationships between labor unions and employer. Of 140 countries, we are 104th yet, 40. Very bad relations. And so what you get sometimes is while I appreciate the need of unions to try and protect workers' rights and so on, I'm all for that, but they also allow for underperformance. And therefore what we need is we need people with the will who don't mind the fallout. David Rodder sang a calypso some time ago, a, a world that doesn't need islands anymore. We have to step up. We have a lot of resources, but we are, we are boxing way below our weight because we are not accountable, because we're not putting in the kind of effort that we need to, and the world doesn't care. You're going to lag behind, and that's, that's what's going to happen. So there's a lot to be done, but we need the will of leaders. And you notice I didn't talk too much about the private sector, because they have a profit motive. They will die or live based on their decisions. Very different, although there's no strong boundary between the two. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Oof, Mr. Solomon, we are going to have you back, absolutely, <laughs> to continue this conversation. Because as you said, we have the will. We need the will. We need the will. And we will make it happen. Yeah. Managing Director of Development Consultant Centre Limited, Mr. Richard Solomon, joining us this morning to give us some insights on work ethic and accountability, truly inspiring us, motivating us, and helping us push forward. We thank you very much for joining us this Thanks morning. Thanks for having me. The Now Morning Show continues after these messages. More things to inspire you, more things to have you stick around. So come on back, guys. Take a look.